Today we're going to be creating JavaScript animations using HTML canvas. It's super easy. We're going to make it interactive like this. Create a network effect. Allow uh, circles interact with one another. Create a lot of randomness. And it's, this is just mesmerizing to me. It's very really simple. We're going to go step by step. We're going to look at one, two, three, four, five different files. We're going to eventually also create a Python version with the Pi game. Let me run that real quick as well. We're going to convert the same code to create a Pi game version. This is running a bit slow. Let me increase the speed and then run it again. There we go. Uh, this is a really cool exercise. We're going to be using GPT-4 to write the code. We're going to try to write minimal code. So let's just begin. Like I said, we're going to be using GPT-4 model from ChatGPT+. This was a long and lengthy exercise, but it was actually pretty easy. But there are complexities along the way. I'm going to try to fit as much of it into this video as possible within 15 minutes or so. And the rest of it, I will make a more detailed video for my Patreon supporters. I'll put it in the link in the description, but all the code files will be available for Patreon supporters as well. To be able to run JavaScript animations or JavaScript in general, you need to download Node.js from the Node.js.org. I'll put the link in the description. Just have this installed in your system and have JavaScript running, JavaScript runtime. And also to make life easier for me, I have Live Server extension installed. When you have the Live Server extension, you will get this Go Live button in your Visual Studio code. And to run JavaScript animations within an HTML canvas, element. You need to have a proper HTML document with the canvas element right here. And now you have to point to your script. In this case, our most basic script is circles.js. Here you can see it. This is created by GPT-4. We're going to get there just in a moment. But when we click go live, then live server is going to initiate it. As you can see, this is the most simple. There is a networking that is forming, but nothing really happens to the circles. They're just bouncing around. If we refresh it, it starts from a random position. And then this is pretty cool, but we want to add more to it. But how did we even get here? So I just want to go back to first prompt that I use with GPT-4, with ChatGPT+. It just said use HTML canvas in JavaScript to get 20 circles moving around in the browser and colliding with one another and the borders. When they are, clore, actually I meant to type close here, a lot of times when I made typos, it didn't really care for them and it got the idea just right. When they are close to one another and a thin colorful line is drawn between them, okay? And then it gave me an explanation. And then it said that first I need to need an HTML file with a canvas element. So this was it. I simply just copied this and I had created a new file, index.html. You can do this by right clicking and saying new file and type the index.html in there. After which time, all I have to do is just paste it in. This is it. And our first file is going to be circles.js. So I right click against new file and create circles.js. And if we continue, after we have created the index.html, then it asks us to create circles.js and include the following code. And I simply just copied this and pasted it. And I save it. And we make sure we save all our files. Because if the live server is running, it will auto-update. As we can see, we have a problem here. Because the problem is that at some point, as it was writing the code, it stopped. And I asked it to continue the JavaScript code. You're going to have to get used to it. And it continued exactly where it left off from let. So after that, it was able to conclude. It also gives an explanation on what is going on. So I have to copy this code as well and add it. Starting and overriding let. Make sure you have no warnings. Save this again. And we should have a cool network effect going on. Right here. But the line is too thin. We can increase, I believe we can increase the number of circles from 20 to something more. And also the, the thinness of the line. Let's just quickly overview what's going on here. We are creating a canvas with a canvas site to be our window inner width and inner height. If you and we are creating a CTX constant using canvas that get context 2D. We are creating a circle class with a constructor. We're going to use this later down the road to define the location and the radius and the velocities and the color. Then we define a draw method for that and then an update. And as I go down, this is for random color. We are using math.random. Create circles is right here. Radius are all determined. Radius locations, 
Velocities and color all are determined by math.random function, but you can enter integers here as well. Then we are creating 20 circles. How about if we were to create 100 and we save this, our live server will automatically upgrade, update, and we now have 100 circles. What about 400 circles? Now that's a crowd. Okay, there we go. You can see the network effect more clearly here. Here where we are drawing the lines, as you can see, we are doing a distance check. We are de determining what the max distance should be. And then if the distance is less than max distance, then we are drawing the line. So lines are not always drawn. The circles have to be closer to one another. We are defining the line width as 0.5. But if I were to change that to 0.8, should be able to see it more clearly. There we go. And then the rest of the code is the animation. We are running a for loop and then we are running the update method on it, draw lines method on it. We are running a loop within a loop. And then we are adjusting the velocities, distances, the calculated distances and the min distance. And then we are actually checking the distances for collisions. And then we are applying the velo appropriate velocities after collisions and whatnot. Update circles velocity after collision and separate overlapping circles. And then we request animation frame and then we just animate. Yeah, this is a good JavaScript exercise. JavaScript is very similar to Python. But let's just continue with the next file. Our next file is circles underscore growth. This is going to have this growth speed element, which we are also defining in the constructor right here. But let's see how we were able to get there with ChatGPT. So after we continue the JavaScript code, for circles.js. After that, I asked it to let's change it so that the circles grow very slowly and gets reduced by 10% of their size when they collide. Just update the necessary code and tell me where to change it. So, we want the circles to grow slowly, ever increasing in size, and then get reduced by 10% of their size when they collide with one another. Okay? To create a, a more interactive effect. So, to make the circles grow slowly and reduce their size by 10% when they collide, now, here is the interesting, the complex part of it. I just said, just update the necessary code and tell me where to change it. So, as you see, these four updates actually gets it working. But you have to know where to inject the code. Okay, I'm going to make a second video for Patreon supporters doing this more in depth. But I'm going to explain it here as well. So, here it says, add a growth speed property to circle class. Okay, it first explains to make a circle's to make the circles grow slowly and reduce their size by 10% when they collide, you can update the circle class and collision handling code inside the animate function. Here's what you need to change. First, it says add a growth speed property to the circle class. And it points to the class and then the constructor. And it says that there's going to be some code before this. And obviously, this is, in, this is indicating that the constructor function is ending. So what I would do is copy this and paste it in the code. Next, where it is appropriate. So it gives you these cool little indicators. And then second, update the create circles function to include the growth speed when creating new circles right here. So we are defining a growth speed variable. And then we are, see, circles.push function uh, method, or push method, it now includes growth speed. That's it. It says to put it wherever appropriate right there. Third one says modify the update method of the circle class to include the circles growth right here. We are see it says that this comes first, then add the growth behavior. You can copy it with you can copy it with the comment line, and it's supposed to come before the collision with borders. And the fourth one is update the circle collision handling code inside the animate function to reduce the circle sizes by 10% when they collide. Okay, right here again in inside the animate function, we find velocity after collision. There's some code, then we add this right before update circles velocity after collision. And when you do that, which I have done right here, see, I have added the growth speed as, as suggested into the constructor and as a variable into the constructor. And then the update, I believe, yeah, right here. And when we now, if I save this, now we have a new JavaScript file, but we have to update our index.html to use that file. So I'm just going to say growth right here. And when I save both files, let's close this one. Make sure you have saved both files because our live server is running. And if we go back, now we actually get the interactive effect going. We can still manipulate the line width and the amount of circles, growth factor, or the shrinkage amount when they collide, as you wish, from within the code.
So after this, I want to try something new. As you see, by the way, when the circles grow beyond a certain size, they disappear. Anyway, uh, I want to get some kind of a networking effect where when circles connect with one another with those lines, they actually, I want them to have a tendency to stay together. So next I ask, let's make sure that the more circles are connected with a line, they form a network and they increase tendency to stay together. How and where in the code can be implemented this? And like I said before, I got these results. And then I wanted them to slow down while not connected. And then gave me also additional instructions for that. And then I was trying to do something with the colors. I believe I foregone that. But once we applied these, then we got the circles underscore growth underscore network.js. And to run this again, we have to change our script file to network file, network.js. And when we save this, and make sure both files are properly saved, then we can go back and see that we have our network effect going on. And then this was pretty cool, you can see, and we have added a dampening factor. As you can see here, it says a value between zero and one, where one means no damping, meaning the slowing down. Smaller values increase the damping effect. For example, if we reduce it to 0 0.99, and we see that they, are, they seem to be just staying in place. Let's go back. Yep, yeah, let's save it. And they go back to their usual functioning. When they are within a network, they tend to stay together. If they, for some reason, go beyond that network, they break the connection, they slow down. Anyway, right after this was the idea of making it interactive and then turning it into Python code with Pygame. Let's take a look at our Py, Python code too. You need to pip install Pygame for this to work. After that, we are importing some modules, initializing, setting the canvas width and height, and defining a screen. Get the Pygame display, creating the clock, creating the damping effect, same as we talked about in JavaScript, creating a class circle with the same attributes. And we are defining some methods here, with so every comment explains what's going on. This is really exactly what's happening with the JavaScript code. It just converted into Python, random color, create circle method, function, draw lines, collision detection, and they're handling all the events in the game with the mouse clickage, and then create and add circles, which the handle events uses, and then the main for running, and clock.tick for speed, and we run this again. Just want to display this one more time. We get a cool little enemy. You can really play around with these. Pygame version is going to be much slower. JavaScript can handle many more circles. But I think this is a good starting point for you to be able to create animations. It's just to have a good fun time while learning how to code and learn how to prompt GPT-4. It was a great time for me. I will slowly scroll through my comments here if you want to just take note of it. And after this, I will scroll through all the code as well to be able to, if you want to pay attention to any particular part, please pause. Like I said, I will make a video talking entirely about how I created from using GPT-4's prompting and then its completions to how to code it. Sometimes I was given back the code that I modified and then wanting modifications on top of that. Like I said, I'll make a video of it and make it available to my Patreon supporters for early access and a later time I will make it available in my YouTube channel as well. I'm just trying some new things. But I will be scrolling over the codes as well, and the code will be available for convenience as a download for my Patreon supporters. The link will be in the description. And we are getting close to it, close to the end of our my chat with GPT-4. As you can see, this took me about maybe two hours, but somebody who is more experienced with JavaScript probably could have handled it much quicker. Here we go. And this is it. Let's scroll through the index file right here. This is our index. Our circles file is like this. Please join our Discord server as well. We are over 200 now. We talk about large language models. Now circles underscore growth file now. We talk about large language models. We just like to discuss these things and the coding aspect of it. I'll put the link for that in the description. Here we go. And then circles underscore growth network. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Feel free to make suggestions. And finally, one before final, the with the user click. There we go. And finally, the Python version. Start from the beginning. 
there we go thank you for watching i really enjoyed making this i hope you enjoyed watching it give it a like if you like the content subscribe thank you very much